Kevin. What are you doing? Max, uh, I am working on a fence that goes out on the front patio of a custom home over here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And it just goes on this little low wall that's right next to the big fireplace. And then it got a little seating area. And the owner wants to be able to let his dogs come up front. So we want some kind of little fence to go there to keep him from wandering off. So that's what I'm working on. But what I wanted to talk about today was I've gotten a lot of questions about my workbench. Where did it come from? How did I make it? What have I done to it? So I thought, let me show you what goes on down there. <laughs> so actually when I bought this place, this table was out back, kind of buried in the corner under a bunch of junk. Uh, this top sheet, this is a one inch thick by four foot by eight foot piece of plate that I originally had on my, my lift table. But then when I got the bigger sheet for over there, I figured, let me bring this, this piece over, set right on top of the table, fits just like a chain. Why did you want to do that? Well, because the original tabletop was only 8-inch plate. It had several holes cut in it, and it was all bent and warped. And every time I would weld up right on top of it, it would warp even more. So I never had anything really flat to work with. You know, if, if you want to build something that's going to stand on the ground, you got to start with something square. You know, you got to start with a flat something. And uh, I figured, well, let me put that sheet up there. Once it's tacked on, it's welded on, you know, the sheet's not going to go anywhere. It's too thick to warp, at least for the way I work. That gives me a nice smooth surface to start with. So I added some gussets to the table because once I put this additional uh, 680 something pounds worth of weight on the top of it. Of course, now the legs themselves had a little wobble. The table had a little movement in it. So added four gussets, helped stiffen everything up. See, so one of the changes I made was I got four trailer balls with the nuts down at the scrap yard. I found a whole bucket full of them. So I made these brackets to go in, welded them to the leg, and then put the trailer balls in. So once I got that on, then I could just come in and level the table with a level, both directions. Now I know if I build anything here, it's going to be square, it's going to be straight, it's going to stand up straight when I get it outside, assuming the ground is flat also. Do you have it on all four uh, legs? Oh yeah, I added it to all four corners. So that way if I ever want to move the table, you know, I can move it and re-level it. You know, if the table gets hit hard enough to move, hit about, uh, about 750 to 800 pounds, doesn't move very often, but I have bumped it. <laughs> but you know that way I can level the table no matter where it is. The other thing I added was some pull-outs. So if I want to work on something a little bit lower, I can put them on here. I can clamp it. I can you know just just give me a little more versatility. So the next thing I decided I needed on this table, and it really has worked out pretty handy, was a cutting table. attached right to the bench itself. So I can put a, you know, a 4x8, a 4x12, a 4x10, whatever. You know, I can put a big sheet on the table. It can support it. I can drag it off onto this. I can do my cutting here, and then I can work on it from there. How's that supported? Well, it, it's got some bars. You know, and another one on the other side. You just pick the bars up. It holds it flat, holds it straight, level at the top of the table. You know, handy little attachment. You know, once it gets you know boogered up finally so bad that if it's too warped or out of shape or whatever, I can just replace this top grill piece or replace the pieces one at a time. So I can just keep rebuilding it over and over. So it's always going to be here. So other than adding the, the Beverly shear on one end, so I can cut my curves and shapes and metal, and I've got a big vise on the other end for clamping and working and, and keeping things still while I'm beating on them. The only other thing I do on occasion is I'll come in with like the 7 inch grinder with about a 150 grit, you know, 180, something like that pad on it. And just very lightly, very flat, I'll go across the top and get any of the little, the little bumps, the little dingle balls off of it, you know, any little weld splatter that may be on there, just to smooth off the top again. 
never never dig on it, never get you know get on it really hard because I want to keep it as flat as I possibly can. Uh, it's great having a big heavy table like this because like with this piece where it's just a piece of eight inch uh, plate on the bottom that's going to get bolted to the top of the wall, I can weld that piece of plate right to the bench. Everything stays still, everything stays straight. I can do all my work here. When I'm done, I just come back, cut the little spot welds off, just lightly grind them off, get them smooth again. Table's flat, table's ready to go. No, I don't treat the table to prevent rust because I'm always grinding on it. You know, I'm always working on the top of it. And it's indoors, and we just don't have any rain. You know, for the guys back east, the guys up north who have more humidity, you know, especially if they have their table outside, yeah, then it becomes a bigger problem and you have rust issues to try to deal with. So I hope that answers your question. I'll see you next time.